Do you have a paranormal encounter you'd like to share with us? Send us an email with your story for a chance of it being featured on Weird World. A Weird World viewer called Mark has sent us his account of his paranormal experience. I have a story that started in 1958 and led to the most frightening evening of my life in 1972. I have never been so frightened ever since. I was born in Inglewood, California in August 1958 and my parents had both been touched by the supernatural in their early years. We lived in Los Angeles in a rented home owned by my grandmother. I have two much older brothers being 10 and 11 years older than I. The house, located on Exposition Place, was far too small for all of us. My father used his GI Bill to purchase a brand new home and a place my mother called The Sticks, Whittier, California. We would drive there on the weekends to watch the construction of the new house. The property was once an orange grove and the main house was supposed to be demolished to make room for this new subdivision. My mother was the first to notice and complain that our lot is misshapen because the old house is still standing. The realty company was unable to get the owner to sell, so with much regret, our lot was given a triangle shape. The old house was owned by Mr. and Mrs. Schutz, an older couple without children. An easement was placed alongside our house for the Schutz to go in and out of their home. We moved in in 1959, and Mrs. Schutz died unexpectedly in 1960. Then in 1961, Mr. Schutz remarried. The first night of their honeymoon in the old house, the new wife ran out and refused to go back inside ever again. This forced Mr. Schatz to find a new house to live in, and, while I looked for a new residence to move in, they lived in a motel. We were hired by Mr. Schatz to watch the house. In 1962, Mr. and Mrs. Schatz had found a new house to move into, far away from Whittier. The old house at this time became unsettled, with curtains moving by themselves during the day, causing us to walk around the house and then unlock it to go inside and investigate why and how are these curtains moving in all the different rooms. But they only moved when nobody was in the house and by then it was then completely empty. One evening my dad was home from work and was working on the engine of his old car, illuminated with a work light and flashlight, parked between the old house and ours underneath the shut's large avocado tree. I like to think of my dad being a World War II veteran as brave and not afraid of anything. But this evening, he ran into the house from the back porch door with all the hair on his head standing upright. I thought it was so funny that I laughed. He gathered all of us in the living room and ordered all of us, including my mum, to never go outside at night to our backyard ever again and just forget about ever going out there to pick avocados in the evening. It took some coaxing to get all of the details of what had taken place outside in the evening darkness. The phenomenon first started with what sounded like a woman crying and sobbing inside the Schatz house. So my dad walked up to the empty house and the sobbing was loudest at the window of the master bedroom. Someone was inside. The curtains opened revealing an empty room with all the windows of the old house closed and locked from the inside. The crying and sobbing continued. I moved inside the old house, quickly coming outside and down the porch steps and moving rapidly towards my dad until the sound was right up to his ears. The crying was so loud and the sobbing so intense that my dad dropped everything and ran for his life into our house and locked the door. I was so young that I wasn't afraid and I didn't hear the crying. Our neighbours didn't really believe what was going on in the old house, so we would watch and listen for disturbances during the day. This watching the old house became something for us small kids on the block to do. For the next two years, we younger kids would tell stories to each other of the old house. My best friend, his little sister and I, would observe the old house while playing in our backyard, and we would see the curtains move on occasions, which would make us scared and scream, but nothing was truly frightening. We became less scared each time something was seen moving inside the old house. My brothers were teenagers in 1965 and were having their friends over more often. They would gather in my older brother's bedroom and hang out in the kitchen. 
the kitchen window faces the old house, and while some of my brother's friends were playing records in my elder brother's bedroom, one of them, Larry, went to the kitchen and saw a face right up against the glass looking at him. A face with the shape of a diamond and fire coming from the eyes. He ran past me in the living room and with a pure look of terror on his face and his blonde hair standing up and waving as he ran out the front door and into the cul-de-sac of our street. He couldn't stop repeating that he'd seen the devil himself with fire pouring from his eyes. Larry was unglued by his experience and he was given the nickname of Crazy Larry. But no one I know today, Larry wasn't crazy and deserves an apology from his friends that gave him such a title. The old house sold and then was occupied again in 1966 by another childless couple, the Badillas. A new chain link fence separated the property and cut us off from the avocados we'd grown accustomed to. As a kid, I asked Mrs. Badilla if she'd seen or heard anything unusual in or around the house. Mrs. Badilla said no, nothing strange at all. In 1972, the Badillas moved, leaving the house empty again. In June 1972, I was out of school for summer vacation. My brothers had both moved out and were living in an apartment. One day I was home alone and my mum and dad were out. We had two dogs in our backyard. It was 10.50 in the evening and I was in the living room with the TV on. I heard the dogs making a noise like they were fighting with each other. Nothing like this had ever happened before and I was startled. I went to the sliding patio door and saw the two dogs jumping and leaping at something invisible. It must be huge because these dogs are German shepherds and they were acting very seriously against an unseen enemy and they were getting closer and closer. I turned on the patio light and still I saw nothing that these dogs were attacking. I closed and locked the sliding door just in the nick of time as my two dogs slammed into the door. Whatever they were going up against was now in the room with me. It felt like all the air in the room had been sucked out and I was in a vacuum. I could still breathe but the sound from outside and the TV were muffled and dull, barely audible. Now I was scared and I ran for my life to my bedroom. I closed the door, but whatever was in the living room was now tossing and breaking all the furniture in the living room. I could feel the wooden floor beneath me bouncing up and down with each crash. Now, I was really scared because I didn't know what to do if it got to me in my room. I could hear it splintering the floor and breaking through the wall into my eldest brother's bedroom. It was tearing his old room apart and the huge console radio too. It punched through the guest bathroom wall and into the attached garage. Everything in there was being destroyed. And I could hear it make an inhuman guttural groaning as it punched out the garage and into the easement. I was at the bedroom window looking out to sea as I heard my mum and dad pull into the driveway. I was too scared to leave the bedroom, so I screamed through the open window, Do you see it? But they hadn't got out of the car yet. So as I got out, I continued to scream in fright, Help me get out of this room. Do you see it? They came inside and opened my door and they brought me out as my dad did a look in every room. My dad went outside. It was only a couple of minutes past 11 p.m. and saw another neighbor called Mr. Peterson with a flashlight looking at his house on the other side of the easement. But I'd asked if he ever saw or heard anything and Mr. Peterson replied that he thought he heard his wooden fence falling over. But everything appeared fine. My mum and dad looked all over the house and garage and found nothing out of place or broken. It was just a noise, a very large and booming noise. I sometimes wonder what would have happened if I'd have stayed in the living room with the noise of crashing and booming and splintering of wood and plaster snapping. Should I have been braver? And what would I have learned by staying? Today, I would welcome another chance to experience the supernatural firsthand. Or... Did I make the best decision and run from it?